Seven minutes, four lives, one gun. Everybody's laying down in a pool of blood. A husband, a mother, a son, a friend. Four very real people who were loved and cherished removed from the earth in less time than it takes most of us to get out of bed. How does it make you feel, mate? What would you say to that guy? He made a really bad decision. He made a bad decision. He took away someone very, very special, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Today, this building stands vacant, a makeshift mausoleum in an empty lot. But it wasn't that long ago that this was the home of Superbike Motorsports. Spartanburg County, South Carolina's premier stop for high-performance cycles, with Scott Ponder acting as king of the crotch rockets. He had a really good, positive reputation. He was the type that would take $5 and turn it into $50, and take $50 and turn it into $500. He had a fantastic mind. The dealership actually started that January of that year. It just kept growing and growing. In fact, Superbike Motorsports did over a million dollars in sales their very first year of business. But for Scott, it was about having more than just the money. Having his own business meant being able to keep the people he cared about close, including his own mother, Beverly. She would uh, take deposits to the bank, you know, for him and everything. And uh, just anything that she could do to help, she just enjoyed the privilege of being around her son. And then there was Scott's service manager, Brian Lucas. Brian had quit his job, and we didn't know it, that he had quit his job and started working just for Scott. He loved Scott. But then most people did. Where did you guys meet? Can you remember what it was about this particular man that won you over? There wasn't anything instant about it. I met him at a motorcycle show in Indianapolis. He did strike me as a sweet, sweet southern gentleman type. And I was from a little bit faster paced life, a little bit the city, and he became a super close friend of mine that it was almost like one day I woke up and said, oh no, I think I'm in love with this guy. A booming business, a beautiful wife, it seemed like things couldn't get any better for Scott Ponder. And yet, by that October, they did. We were actually in my hometown at my brother's home, and I didn't tell anybody. I had run into the drugstore, grabbed a pregnancy test, and took a pregnancy test and started screaming in the bathroom because I was so excited about it. He got a big smile on his face. I love that he knew this baby was coming. Sadly, it was a baby he would never meet. November 6th, a day of horror where several people would lose their lives. Obviously, you're, you have vivid memories of that particular day. Do you remember where you were? I do. That day, I had talked to him at, I don't know, maybe 2.15, somewhere around there. He called me, and it was a normal, you know, well, I'll see you later. I, I love you, bye. That was the last time I, I talked to him. Shortly after that, Brian Lucas arrived at the shop. Brian wasn't even supposed to be there that day. He had the day off. He was going away with his family for a long weekend and was called in just minutes before the homicide because there was a customer that something had not been done to his motorcycle. Not long after that, Scott's mum, Beverly, entered the store, having just returned from taking Scott's cancer-stricken grandma to chemo. Miss Ponder said she physically had to carry her in the house. She was so weak that day. And so when she got her settled, she went across the street to the shop. Uh, she was actually going to have to take a deposit to the bank for Scott. And when she walks in, the phone was ringing. 
It was a call from Scott's friend, Noel, asking if he could come by the shop. He said it will take no time at all to get there, just seven minutes. Seven minutes for Noel to drive to the shop and then stumble upon four people murdered in cold blood. All this happened within that amount of time. Noel said when he came up, he thought that Scott and Brian were playing a trick on him. He said he actually kicked Brian, you know, to try to tell him, OK, guys, that's a good trick. But then he saw the blood. His mama's been shot, the mechanic's been shot, and the owner. This is Superbike Motorsports, or what used to be, and this was the, the very site of uh, quadruple murder. This was a very large crime scene. It, it was very bloody, uh, very gruesome. Mechanic Chris Sherbert's body is found in the back of the shop, bent over as though he was working on a bike. Beverly, also in the back, appears to have been ambushed while stepping out of the bathroom. Brian Lucas and Scott Ponder, they were both uh, found dead. Their bodies were out here in the front of the store. Brian's is closer to the door, about near where the sidewalk is there, and, and uh, Scott Ponder's was closer to one of the parked cars here in the parking lot as though they were trying to escape. But it soon became brutally clear that leaving the shop alive was never an option. It was overkill is what it was. What has been said is that after everyone was shot and killed, whoever done the murders went back, shot everybody in the chest and the head point blank. It was execution style. Whoever had come here intended to uh, carry out this heinous act. Sheriff's deputies immediately swarm the scene of Chesney, South Carolina's first ever quadruple homicide. And in a small town like this, news like that spreads fast. I got a phone call on my cell phone and it was a, a girl who was actually one of his vendors and she said, I'm trying to get up to the dealership and I can't, I can't get there. There's a huge blockade of law enforcement. And she said, I'm hearing little things that there might have been a shooting. So immediately I got off the phone, start calling him and call and call. I would call his cell phone while it was shut off. At that point, I was thinking, okay, somebody robbed the place and Scott shot them, and so now Scott's being held somewhere, and I'll be honest with you, that's the scenario I put in my head for three hours. So you were in that limbo for that long, not knowing what had I happened? I was. I couldn't register that at the time until I looked up at one of our family friends who was standing there, and, and the tears were rolling down his face, and as soon as I saw the tears rolling down his face, I knew, I knew that this was real. And all across the South, other family members were receiving different variations of the same heart-wrenching call. But with such an extreme act of violence carried out in broad daylight, it's not long before authorities received their first solid tip. The sheriff had a picture of two people, a man and a female that had been seen walking alongside the road. I know who that man and that woman were. Coming up, are these the last faces four people ever saw? His family is sure that they had something to do with it. And as the search for a motive begins, a chilling picture emerges. I believe it was a hard hit. 